Hello everybody, my name is Nasty Mold and in this guide I'm going to show you everything you may need to know about the Eye of Eden. I'll show you where to find all the map shrines, all the winged light, and of course how to navigate through the Eye of Eden as safely as possible. We'll also go over Orbit, which is the section right after the Eye of Eden. This is of course where we can collect our Ascended Candles for completing the Eye of Eden, Ascend Spirits and get their permanent wing buffs, and find some Elder Cosmetics. So first up, this is the Eye of Eden Gate. Pretty freaky, pretty daunting, giant doorway uh, that essentially brings us to our death, unfortunately. But hey, we'll go through it together. Now, if this gateway is not open for you, that probably means that you have to complete a realm beforehand. So if any of these uh, look kind of empty, that probably means you have to do the realm before it. Or if it's still not open and all of these realms are filled, just go to the Vault of Knowledge, go to the very top, sit down with the Elder, and then it should bring you into the Eye of Eden. The main thing we're going to need to go into this place is as many Winged Light as is possible. Now, as a beginner player, I think the maximum you can bring is 118 Winged Light. You can see at the top here, I have 225, so I'm pretty well equipped for this. I think I'll be pretty safe and I can get to the end. At the end of this video, I'll be showing you how you can get more permanent wing buffs, so in the future, you could come through here with a lot more light. But for now, as a newer player, the maximum you can bring is 118. So first and foremost, you want to make sure you have as many winged light as you can bring. I will have a guide on where you can find all the winged light in the realms below. Um, it will just keep us living as long as we can. And also, if you're a veteran player, you may want to bring a Elder Mask or something. So this gate here says I have 20 out of 20. What this means is I need at least 20 winged light to enter. I do recommend coming with a lot more, though. Alright, this is the first section of the Eye of Eden. It's pretty creepy. Uh, it's almost like the Golden Wasteland, I guess. Over here is where we can find our first map shrine. I do have a full guide on where you can find all these map shrines below as well. Basically, it's a little map that shows the entirety of the Kingdom of Sky. And in that way, you can see where you might be missing some winged light or some spirits. This here is the main entrance gate. You can see we have five masks up here. That and what we need to do is light the corresponding one of these little uh, lighty things below. Very descriptive, isn't that? So light these, wait for the light to reach the very middle, and do it on all five of them. Once all five of them have reached the middle, we should have a little cutscene. Oh, it's not supposed to pop open like that, but hey, the gate is now open. So from this point on, pretty much everywhere we go is going to be at least somewhat dangerous. I'm going to walk you through it as carefully as I possibly can, but do take note that you may lose some winged light, we get pelted by these big stones, or there's krills or crabs around here. There's a lot going on. So we're just going to make our way up. Um, you may notice there's a very strong gust. I do find it easier just to make sure we're walking instead of flying. And here we are at our first hazard. You can see there are rocks pelting through between these little mountains here. We just want to wait for them to stop, and then we can run across. Hold up here because there's more rocks up ahead. And once they pass, run! Ah. If you do get hit and you do lose winged light, you can always just close out your game or something, and uh, you should retain your winged light. You'll just have to come back through here. Oh, I fell somehow. Ouch. Uh, I do also think it's a little easier to navigate if your sky kit is a bit taller. But of course, they do have a bit more of a target on their back for these big stones. Now, up ahead here is kind of weirdly one of the trickiest parts for me. For some reason, I really struggle with this. You can see in the distance, and actually right next to us, there are these little pieces of fabric that are whipping in the wind. So we can't make the jump when it's whipping wildly like it is right now. We have to wait for it to kind of calm down like it is right now. Whew, easy. So yeah, just be sure to watch out for the wind. You may have to do it a couple times still, it's a bit finicky. Making our way around, making our way around. And we are done our very first phase of the Eye of Eden. Great job! Yay! I know it's spooky at first. We make our way into this broken building here. 
And we should have our first Eden winged light, which I actually have picked up. It's right here. One thing about this light is you want to make sure that it actually follows and goes into your character before you go into the next area. Once you transition through, you may lose it if you go too fast. So just make sure you've collected it properly. And let's make our way to the second phase. All right, from here is when it actually does start to get pretty tricky. Uh, that first part was a bit of a walk in the park. We also do have a little mural you can view here. Just light these candles and you should be able to see. Look at that. Oh. Beautiful. You don't really have to light that. It doesn't do much, it just looks cool. All right, on to the next part and we are going to open this door up ahead. I'm not sure why I got turned around there. Open this door by lighting these two little brazers here. So we have this one here and this one right next to it and this should open the door. Now if you thought the first little bit of raining rocks was difficult, oh boy, we're in for it now. This is where there is a near constant rock rain. But don't worry, it only gets worse from here. Uh, so let's make our way up. We're going to have this cutscene and then we can keep going. We don't have to worry about this krill. It won't bother us for quite a while. We're going to have one more cutscene. Don't wander too far or you might be in the stream of the rock rain. Now this is where we're going to want to look out and listen. Um, you can know that the rocks are about to start again once you see that flash of lightning. So once you see that, you want to make sure you're pretty close to some sort of shelter. If you do get hit by rocks, there's usually players who will come help and light you. There's also these little uh, brazers around here that can charge you. Wait for that flash. Make sure we're hiding. Freaky. Just don't get too cocky. Don't jump too far ahead. Make sure you always have some sort of a barrier between you and the rocks within your immediate vicinity and there's a lot of these oh oh that was risky of me that was me getting cocky what did i say at least i'm okay here i can charge at this this is where the rock rain ends for now if you've been hit by a rock you can charge up here there's also players who are helping me charge thank you very much guys and then in our next section, we have to deal with a few krill. There are two that patrol around the next area. Bye, everyone. Okay. Over here is the krill section. But first off, we're going to head towards the left side for our second map shrine. You do want to be careful because I think a krill can spot you if you come out here. Just make sure there's nothing coming. And then we're going to head towards the left-hand side. And there's our map shrine collect that to add more to the map. Alrighty. Ooh. Now for our next section here, which has two krill patrolling. I believe the krill that comes straight through here has just passed, so I'm gonna go and run forwards. Um, otherwise, I just wait for it to pass. Run, run, run. It's coming. Ah! And then I hide under this little platform here. So I'm going to wait for it to pass. So you usually have to wait for this krill twice. Once at the very beginning and once right there. Once it's passed, we can just go through. There's another that patrols around this pipe here. I have never had an issue with it. There's so many things blocking the view that as long as you're running pretty fast, even if it spots you, you'll be okay. There's lots of little obstructions in its path, so you should be fine. And then into this pipe. This is the crab room. You don't really have to worry about the crabs too much. They're not, they're mostly in the water here, but it has this creepy uh, red wall, which I think looks cool. Ugh. Come on. There we go. Now we're going to jump up here and jump around. Well, there we go. Hi, Krill. You might see one pass there, but that one does not hurt you. It just looks creepy. Now we are past the krill. We have one more way up ahead. It's pretty much at the end of this section. 
Now we have to worry about rock rain once again. Once the rain passes, we can run up ahead and hide behind some of these barriers. I find that this first barrier here can be a little finicky. Sometimes I hide behind it and I still get hit. It's not fun. So I like to run over to this brazier if I have time. All right. And now over to the next one here. Should be safe here from the rocks. Which again, after that flash, they start coming. And then we have another little brazier up ahead, kind of by that archway. It's a bit hard to see with how foggy it is over here, but there it is. Now this is our last moment to recharge before we reach the end here. Um, so we do have a krill patrolling. I like to go up ahead here and I like to hide behind this rock. It has like a little nook that's perfect for one sky kid to fit in stones cannot touch you here thankfully and then the krill is going to patrol from left to right now i find that it spends more time on the right hand side than the left hand side some people will be comfortable running now but i am a bit over precautious and i'm also a creature of habit i like the krill to be on the right hand side i'm not really sure why so i'm gonna wait for it to pass by so you all have to wait out this krill moving to the side and also wait out these stones raining down. So once it stops now, I'm gonna run. Run! Now after this point, you should be safe once you get in that hallway. There's also a winged light right here. Oh, hi krill. Don't mind me. I'm just gonna go in here. Wait it out so this krill doesn't attack me. So from this point, we have a total of nine winged light. So there's a lot that we can collect right here. I'm just gonna wait for that krill to pass and then I'll show you that one that was outside one more time. Go on, get out of here. So ooh, I'm sliding down right here, just on the left-hand side of the archway of the hallway is this winged light. We also have one that is right here underneath the archway. And then beyond, we should have seven more. So let's just keep going. Obviously, I've collected them, so they're not super apparent. But if you're coming through here, they should be very vibrant. There's one here. One more here. Up ahead. One behind this little lantern. One here. ahead again here and then in our final stretch of the hallway we have a couple more one here and our last one ahead is right here excellent so that is all the winged light that we can find within the eye of Eden now from this point if you want to keep your winged light you can just go home um, once we continue on, there is no returning home from this point. So what that means is we absolutely have to finish the next part. You cannot go into any of the other realms unless you finish the next part. So if you want to, you can go home in the settings and you are totally okay to play the game however you want. You can go through any of the realms, you can visit your friends, you can do quests. Um, but if we do continue through the rest, we do have to complete it. And what that means is that we will temporarily lose access to the rest of the game um, until we go through here and we lose all of our winged light. That is the finale of the game. It's a cycle of life and death. We have to lose all of our winged light to continue. So we essentially have to die in game. After we've completed this section of the Eye of Eden, we're free to go back into all of the realms of the game and you can recollect your winged light. Um, you can also finish the Eye of Eden with a little bit more winged light as a bonus to carry on to your next life. And just so you guys know, winged light is the only thing that you lose. You don't lose your friends, you don't lose any currency, you don't lose emotes, only the winged light, which of course is recollectable. Now before we get into this final part, I'm going to show you what happens if I go home. Um, just so you can see that you are locked out from the game, you're kind of stuck here until you've finished it. Uh, well, first of all, you can't even go home. The option is grayed out. 
So what I'm going to do is force quit the game and I'll come back. So now that we've entered the point of no return and we are officially within the Storm of Eden, this means that we are locked to this section of the game until we complete it. So you'll notice the Aviary Village is a little bit creepy now. All of our portals are gone. There's nowhere we can go to. So we just have to go to the Return Shrine and go back to the Storm of Eden. Oh boy. Now from this point on, um, our whole sole purpose is to find these little Sky Kid statues and give them our winged light as much as we possibly can. So I have a map here and I'll also upload it to a Google Drive so you can check it out yourself if you need to. And all of these little blue dots are the Sky Kid statues that we're going to give our winged light to. And all of these orange dots are the various lanterns that are scattered about. So we're going to give our winged light and then make our way to the diamond at the very end. Now, I'll admit my route through here is a little weird. I think most players do this kind of zigzag pattern and go to all of the Sky Kid statues, but I do things a little differently. I go around the right hand side and then down the left and then up through the middle. This way I don't miss anything. Now, you absolutely do not have to follow my way if you don't like this way. There's no right way to do things. Um, I also have a little mini map I made in the corner that is going to follow where the Sky Kid goes. Um, so you can follow along on your map if you'd like to. First up though, I am going to grab this map shrine that's in the right hand corner here. Oh, and if you don't like the mini map, you find it distracting, whatever, I'm also going to upload a version without it. Um, and you can find that in the description below. If you're maybe, if you've done it a few times, you might find it more of a distraction and a hindrance than a help. But basically it's going to follow us as we go along. And uh, it's going to kind of show you where we are on the map that I've created that you can find in that Google Drive. I do hope that in some way it might help new players. That is why I created it, but there is an alternate version if you find it a little distracting. Um, and it might be out of sync slightly. So here I am at the very beginning once again, and we're gonna make our way through, passing our light to these Sky Kid statues and lighting these lanterns as we go. This is pretty dangerous. You're gonna wanna keep an eye on the storm. It comes and goes in waves. Oh. And sometimes it's a little brutal like that. It just smacked me. I do recommend always lighting these lanterns. They are going to be your saving grace. If you get hit by some of these rocks, all you have to do is crawl back towards your nearest lantern. So there is another one over there. Again, I go along the right hand side. So I don't bother with the left hand stuff for a little bit. We'll come back for it. I have one behind this rock here and then back down, staying by the lantern until we can see that this wave of stones has finished. Grabbing this one here with the lantern. There's another one just behind it. Waiting for this wave to end so we can continue on. It's a lot of patience. Um, if you go out all willy nilly, sprinting into the storm, you will probably get bonked and hurt here. Ouch. And sometimes you'll just get bonked for no reason. But thankfully we have lanterns here. You'll notice that every single one of these Sky Kid statues we save, it takes one of our winged light. That is the whole point of it. Each one of these statues we save is actually going to give us a fragment of what is called an ascended candle. And I believe that each of these little Sky Kid statues we save by giving one of our winged light to It'll give us 25% of an ascended candle. So we do need to save four of these Sky Kid statues to get one total ascended candle at the end of orbit, which is the final section of the Eye of Eden. So there are 63 of these total Sky Kid statues we can find. And if we collect every single one of them, we give a winged light to every single one of them, we should come out with 15.75 ascended candles. And uh, please, if you're a new player, don't worry. You might have a lot of struggles making it to the very end with the limited amount of winged light you have. That's totally normal. The more you play the game, the more you progress, the more permanent wing buffs you unlock at the end of Eye of Eden. And um, also from traveling spirits in the future, you'll be able to get a lot further. You know, you only have 118 to start. Me, I came in with over 200. It's definitely a long process, but eventually 
you'll be able to continue on pretty far. And it, it's also easier when you have friends with you that will help keep you lit throughout the Eye of Eden. Now I've finished up on the right hand side there. I'm making my way around the left. Again, this is a little bit of a weird route. It's just worked for me for a very long time. You know, if I ever get hit here, I can just walk up ahead and there's a ton of lanterns that I've lit. So I'm grabbing all of these, making my way down the left hand side. And then we'll make our way up the very middle to get those last missing ones. I just do this as an extra precaution to make sure I don't miss any. Uh, because, you know, you don't want to come back here to grab one more statue that you've missed. Oh, what a pain. But again, just go at whatever pace or whatever sort of route that you want to take. You don't have to follow me. I'm not the end all on what you do in the Eye of Eden. Are we at the very end here? Almost. Just a few more. You can see I'm now down to 199 winged light in total. Yeah, that was all of them. So now I'm going up through the middle again. Double checking if I missed anything on the right hand side or on the left. It's a pretty easy way to get a good scope of the entire area as you make your way up. Some of these statues are pretty sneaky, so... You might want to do this just to get a second look around. Waiting for the rain to pass as usual, making our way up. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we're almost done with this, which would be the first phase of uh, the Eden Storm. So this is where you'll actually have waves that you can kind of go in between and maybe not get hit. As we progress, the rain is going to get a lot heavier and a lot more constant. Ow! Jeez, I have to, hang on, I have to charge up here. I got smashed twice, ouch. As you can see that we just have one more straight ahead and that is it for this section. Excellent. Now I'm going to go over here. This is kind of the last section before the second phase where we have constant rain. Make sure I charge up before I go up ahead. Um, some players like to go around uh, kind of the right hand side. So they go straight ahead this way. I don't like going that way just because there are some statues we have to get on the left. Um, so what I like to do is I like to go through that crack. You can see straight ahead there next to that one statue we've already saved. There's a little crack. We're gonna run straight for it. Uh-oh, I didn't time that very well. Sneak through this crack. And here is our last barrier that will block us. Um, from this point, we're gonna have constant rain. So we have our two statues up ahead we have to save and a lot fewer of lanterns. They're a lot more sparing and the rain is a lot more dangerous. So running up ahead as fast as we can. Ah, please don't hit me rocks. Here is our lantern. Ooh. So we're gonna make sure we charge here and then we'll grab the few scattered statues around us. You have these two here. Oof, oof. And then we'll go back to that lantern, make sure we charge up. Ouch. Please, Rain, don't be mean. Now this is where it's good to have a friend with you just in case you fall, or an Elder Mask, which you unlock much later in the game by completing constellations. It's a lot of work to unlock those. Um, we can see that our next lantern is pretty much straight ahead, but with the constant rain, it's pretty brutal to get to it. Uh, if we fall at this point, you can always crawl back to this lantern. But with the amount of light I have, I usually just keep going because I can make it to the end. Uh-oh, yeah, I'm definitely going to, uh, I'm going to lose my light here. Uh, no. Oh, well, that's okay. I'm in crawl mode now. So what this means is when we get pelted by these rocks, I'm going to lose a lot of winged light. So I'm going to ignore that lantern now because I can't light it anyways. If you don't have a lot of winged light, you might want to go back to that lantern and relight yourself. Try again. It's really up to you. From this point on, uh, the storm is super mean. There's another lantern on the right hand side there. Um, and from this point on, you might have a lot of winged light like me, 
the storm is basically here to make sure you lose it all, so you do die at the end of this without having to wait five minutes. So it's brutal for a reason. It's also meant to be difficult so that when you do eventually progress in the game and you have a lot of winged light, you feel a lot of gratification. When you make it to the very end, you feel like, yes, I did it. Now, if you have managed to light all the lanterns up to this point, congratulations. But this is the final lantern here. There are no more ahead of this point. So this is your final safe refuge. If you've made it to this point, well, unfortunately, you're just going to have to crawl like me from now on. This lantern right here, it is our last safe haven. All right, so we're just going to keep going now. Crawl with me. We have one statue here, a few up ahead. They're kind of scattered left and right, so you do have to make your way side to side. If you made it this far and it's your first time through Eye of Eden, congratulations. That's pretty incredible. I don't think I made it this far when I went my first time. It's definitely difficult. And it's also intimidating. It's scary. If I had the game audio on, it's so ambient and creepy. We're just going to keep going on, grabbing these statues as we go. We're practically at the very end now. Just have a few up ahead. And of course, the rocks are <laughs> just constant. Constant, constant. Oh boy. Just getting smooshed by these rocks. So you can see I have 78, 77 winged light left. It's really stealing all my light from me. Once we make it to this section up ahead, you can see there's water ahead of us. This is the final stretch. This is the last little bit of uh, statues that we can find. So we've made it. We've done it. I think there's one more up ahead. Woo! Two more. Two more. Congratulations if you've made it this far. You have fully completed the Eye of Eden. That's incredible. Going to the last one here. Ooh, I'm almost out of light. Can I make it? Yes, I can. Yippee! So that's it. That is our final statue. Yay! That means that we should have 15.75 ascended candles waiting for us once we make it to orbit. And then just make your way to the diamond if you'd like to. You don't have to. At this point, we just want to die. <laughs> if you have friends with you and you die early, you'll actually follow them as a little spirit. It's pretty fun. You can throw confetti or do emotes at them. It looks really funny. Look at us. We've done it. We've made it. Um, if you have strange players with you too, you can also follow them. And then if you're waiting too long and you want to continue, there should be a pop-up that will appear that says, do you want to proceed alone? If you're with your friends, you probably don't want to tap that because that means you'll abandon your friends and you'll go through the next part solo. Um, but otherwise, you can just wait. Be with your buddies. Oh boy. I am ceasing to exist. One light left. Never mind. Right, so from this point, if you had players with you in this area, you would turn into a little spirit and follow them. Um, but, because I think I'm alone here, we are just going to move on to the next area. From this point on, everything is completely safe. No harm will come to you. Now it's just a little celebration as we get reborn.
Here we are in this mysterious room, a sky kid with no wings, just lost in the darkness. How sad. Just a tiny little fraction of what we once were. Oh. Once we get up here, you can see that there is some sort of a lit sky kit ahead of us. Let's make our way there. Unfortunately, we have to walk the whole way. Previously, I think you used people to jump, which was nice, but now we can't. So it's just a little slow mosey. Hello? Who is that? Hello? their little buddy. We should have a prompt to grab their hand and help them to their feet. And then from this point we have to tap on them and give them a hug. And now everything changes. We are back, we are back, and we are better than ever. Our light is slowly refilling. We have our wings once again, although temporary. And uh, we can fly, so let's fly straight up. We'll follow this beam, and it will bring us to the final section of this game. All of the Sky Kid statues that we have sacrificed some of our light to are reborn! Whee! And they fly up with us. And here we go! This is the fun part. We are an all-powerful Sky Kid. Our light is returned. Look at us go. There are a few shortcuts I usually take here to make it a little faster. When you play this for so long, and you do this once a week, um, you do want to kind of expedite the process. I might do a faster I Have Eaten guide. I'll have to see. If I do, I'll link it below. From here, though, there's plenty of light things to keep our uh, wind light charge. There's clouds, there's creatures, there's things we can ride. So we're just going to make our way and have fun.
Now for this part here, this is where we're going to meet the spirits that we have saved throughout the game. So these are the spirits that we have met through the realms. Um, there will also be seasonal spirits. When you greet them as traveling spirits, eventually they'll come here. And if we run into them, if we tap them, they'll actually give us a little bit of wax. So if you're in a pinch, it's a nice way to get some wax from these spirits. Just bump into them. Hello, rhythm spirits. Hello, dream spirits. Hello, enchantment spirits. It's really nice to see how you progress in the game and how many spirits you can find here. You know, you start out with so few and then as you play, you've really saved so many little characters. Now, I am going to have to put different music over this, unfortunately. I really, really wish I could play the music that plays here because it's just beautiful. Um, but unfortunately, I cannot. I get claimed every time. If you tap along with your Sky Kid, they actually do call along to the music, which is such a cute touch. And the music that's played here is actually by the incredible Aurora. It's just so gorgeous. So beautiful. She has her touch in the intro and the outro of the game. And of course she had her own season. Now from this part we now see some Sky Kids that we've met throughout the game. So these will be players that you have played with most or added most recently. Most of these are players that I've given season passes to. <laughs> That's why their names are so weird. But as you bump into them they will actually charge you so you can keep flying. You'll also see individual players flying around. So there you can see my friend Nomi was up there. If we run into those, they'll give us some wax as well. So there are a few ways to get some regular wax by going through the Eye of Eden, which is nice. This part is always bittersweet because you'll see names of maybe some friends. Oh look, it's, ah, it's Aurora. Hi, hi Aurora. You'll see some names of friends that maybe you played with for a really long time and you, know, you haven't played with for a while, maybe they quit the game, and uh, you'll just see them fly by, but to me it's actually, I, I like seeing these names of players I used to play with because it's just, I don't know, it's good memories. They'll always be with you in some way, you know? It's just kind of sweet to see them. And here we go, we're gonna make our way to the very end here, and this will bring us to Orbit. Here we land with those other Sky Kids that we saved. These are the statues that we gave our winged light to. They have been reborn as well. And they will give us our wax. So this is where we get our Ascended Candle Currency for the most part. You can also get it through Shard Events, which I have a guide on. I'll link it below if you need more Ascended Candles. But there they go. Thank you for your wax, I appreciate it. Bye. Alrighty, this is Orbit. One of the most beautiful sections of the game. We made it through, we are now reborn. These little stars here are the pieces of ascended candle wax that the spirits gave us. And we're gonna make our way up. So you'll notice um, when we get up here, we have a big constellation table, just like we have in home space. Now we can interact with this table here, and this is how we will ascend the spirits that we found throughout the realms. 
and get ourselves some permanent wing buffs. And these are used to strengthen our wings in our next life. So let's open it up. It is very similar to the one we have in home space. Let me zoom out so you can see everything. Uh, here is the Valley of Triumph constellation. We have our spirits and then in the very middle, I have a flag. I believe yours will probably be a question mark if you're a new player. So from any one of these spirits, we can unlock a permanent wing buff. That is the lock with the wings right there. Each one of these will have their own price. Um, they vary from one ascended candle all the way up to nine ascended candles, depending on which constellation you're buying them from. And some spirits that have capes, they have two tier capes at the very top, and those have a secondary permanent wing buff up there. So you can get that one for an additional wing buff. Now, unfortunately, you can't just buy these outright. You will have to buy the nodes that are connected beforehand. So you'll have to get their emote first and then buy their blessing or spell, which is right above it, and then their permanent wing buff. So if you wanted to unlock all these spirits and unlock all their wing buffs, it's not something that you could do immediately because we do have a limited amount of ascended candles. It's something you'd have to do after a long period of time. Additionally, every single realm will have its own exclusive elder cosmetics to unlock. So we have the Isle of Dawn, Daylight Prairie, and so on. Each of these will have their own cosmetics. They are not easy to unlock whatsoever. You do actually have to unlock everything from every spirit within that realm. Except if they have a cape, you don't have to unlock that tier two cape at the very top. That's just an extra thing. It doesn't count towards completion. So for example, if I wanted to get the Isle Elder Cosmetics, I would have to unlock every single item from every single spirit in the Isle of Dawn. The Pointing Candle Maker, the Rejecting Voyager, and the Ushering Stargazer. That is how you get 100% completion, and then, once you have 100% completion, that little question mark will turn into a flag. We can tap that while we're here in orbit, and it will summon the Elder from the Isle of Dawn. And this is how we can unlock their cosmetics. So every single elder has their own hairstyle, which you've probably seen in their cutscenes. And they also have an exclusive elder mask. Elder masks do help prevent damage from uh, krill and rocks and things like that. I will link a guide for all elder cosmetics below if you'd like to see them. So yes, we do have to unlock every single thing from every single one of these spirits in the Isle of Dawn. So it will take a long time to actually unlock these. And of course, the elder cosmetics are pretty expensive. When it comes to other spirits that have the tier two capes at the very top, we have to unlock everything except the tier two cape. So that does not count towards 100% completion. That is just an additional thing you can buy if you have a lot of extra hearts. They're pretty expensive, so I would hold off on them. They don't really count towards completion and they're not super important. There's cooler capes. All right. so. Let's get into it with all of these spirits here. I have completed every single realm. That means that I can summon the Elder from the Isle of Dawn. They all feature a cutscene where the Elder comes down. Boom. I'm just going to showcase the one because it will take a while to summon all of them. So let me get them all and I will skip the other cutscenes. Sorry. Daylight Prairie, Elder. Hello. Here we have the Hidden Forest Elder. Now Valley is a little different because of course the Elder is a set of twins. So we have the Valley Twins here. They have two different hairstyles. And then we have the Golden Wasteland. And finally we have the Vault of Knowledge, the Vault Elder. So, all of these spirits have hairstyles to give, and only some have Elder Masks so far. I believe they are going to add more in the future. So for the Elder of the Isle, of course you have to unlock everything beforehand, and then you have to get the hairstyle first before you can unlock the uh, Elder Mask. And these are also pretty expensive. The hairstyle is 4 Ascended Candles, and then the mask is 125 Ascended Candles, so something that you definitely want to buy when you're done everything else in the game. For the Prairie Elder, their hair is three Ascended Candles and their 
Ultimate Mask is 75 cent a candle, so it is the cheapest of all the masks. Also, feel free to call me crazy, but I love this hairstyle a lot. I think it's really funny. Uh, for the Elder of the Forest, their hairstyle is 6 ascended candles, and their mask is 250 ascended candles, which is our most expensive one so far. We still don't have the masks for the other spirits yet. For the Valley Twins here, you do have to buy them in order. So the first hair on the bottom is 5 ascended candles, and then up top it is 6 ascended candles. I think that these two hairstyles have to be the most popular out of the Elder hairstyles. So just remember that you do have to unlock the one below first, so if you want the one up top, you technically have to spend 11 ascended candles to get it. And with these hairstyles, remember that there's no benefit. It is just a cosmetic you can wear. You don't really earn anything with it. It's just kind of a way to signify that you have completed this entire constellation. You have finished it. Uh, for the Wasteland Elder, their hairstyle is six ascended candles. Actually, this one may be one of the most popular hairstyles. It's really cool really nice and then we have the vault elder whose hairstyle is five ascended candles so those are the elders of sky pretty cool obviously these are not items that anyone really needs they're just additional items once you've unlocked everything and you have spare ascended candles they're pretty cool though yeah all right let's continue on all right before we finish the orbit and before we go back to the main segment of the game there are a few little secrets I want to show you. For one, on the right hand side over here, we have a few floating things. Uh, there's this bridge here, which up top has this little shrine. If we interact with it, I believe we can get one free heart, which is pretty nice, especially if you're a newer player. You might want to unlock some cool cosmetic with that. Making our way down and right below, we actually have our final map shrine. And you know what's weird? I have never sat at this one. So, yay, this is my final map shrine too. Let's sit down and add it. Orbit is just towards the side of the Eye of Eden, I think, on the map. Yes. Orbit! Well, look at that. My map shrine is done. It only took me years. Oh, and now I'm missing all of this light. You can see it's been added back to all of the realms. Whew. You're gonna have to go on a winged light run after this, which, if you need to, I have a link below to do that. Over here we have a little circular staircase. It's not really a staircase. A sparkle case. And as we make our way up, we have this beautiful scenery and this gorgeous little bench where you can sit down with your friends. It's a really great spot to just relax after going through the entire ordeal that is the Eye of Eden. Take some beautiful pictures with your friends. So nice. And really that's it for the secrets up here. That is all of it. Oh, oh, people put up a little shared space. How cute. All right, down we go again, woo, and as we head forward towards the giant gate, you may see some light on either side of the path. Um, you might not see as much as me. This is just how many spirits I have ascended. So these are the ones that I have bought those permanent wing buffs from. And now as we're getting reborn, they are handing me all of these wing buffs that I have unlocked in the game. So these are from all of the base game spirits and then also from traveling spirits who arrive every two weeks from previous seasons. So it's a lot. If it's your first time coming through here, you'll probably only have like between one to four spirits giving you these. But uh, the longer you play, the more you'll have and you will pretty much start with a, a set of full wings. If you only bought one or two permanent wing buffs, that means that you will start the game with one or two additional wing light, which is pretty handy because early on um, that really adds up. You know, you'll start with two flaps essentially. I'm gonna make my way all the way over here and through the portal and then we have the credits of the game. Now at this point we do have a secret winged light. So as we go through the portal, we will be reborn with one additional light. That means that we can actually start out with at least a set of wings if you're a brand new player. Um, that means that 
If you didn't ascend any spirits and get their wing buffs, you actually do start out with one anyways. If you bought a couple, then you started out with maybe three, which is really nice. So here is the cutscene. And once the skip button appears in the corner, you should be able to tap it. And then we will be reborn. Thank you for playing Sky. What a beautiful game, huh? Man. I love games like this where they kind of have uh, a progression where it's really scary and then you're just all powerful, like Journey, Abzu, games like that. It's just, it's so nice. And here we are, back at the very start. Yay! So, um, here we are. Yeah, we're back. Um, we have started with as many wings as we have uh, collected using the permanent wing buffs. So for me, I've started with quite a lot. If you're a new player, you probably started with a lot less, plus one winged light from the cutscene. So no matter what, as a new player, you will always start with at least one winged light, which means you'll start with at least one set of wings so you can flap. Now that we're back, we can play through the game again if you'd like to. You can play a different way, you can play with friends, you can really do whatever you want. It's a pretty open game. Um, the only thing that we're missing is, of course, our winged light that we collected throughout the realms, which have now been put back in their exact same spots. So let me go into the Isle of Dawn and I'll show you. The winged light that we originally collected there should be back. And of course, now that we've finally finished the Eye of Eden, the gates are back open. You can go wherever you want. You can play as you'd like. We are no longer stuck in uh, the storm of the Eye of Eden, which is really nice because it's a little overwhelming. I get it. So back into any of the realms, our winged light that we had given to the Sky Kids has now gone back to its proper place and it will always be in this place if you do happen to go through Eden again. It'll be in these exact places once more. So you can go through the game, collect them all again if you'd like to, unlock cosmetics, make friends. There's also um, seasonal spirits you can collect now after you've gone through the Eye of Eden if you are a first time player. So there's a lot of more spirits within the realms. There's a lot to explore. So yes. That is the Eye of Eden, and that is the ending of Sky. Thank you guys so much, as always, for watching. I hope you found this helpful. Hope you enjoyed. If you enjoy Sky content, I make a ton of it. And I make videos helping players every single day with the daily quests, with the shard events, with seasonal or event help. Yeah, stay tuned if you'd like to. And if not, I hope you enjoyed the game. Alright guys, thanks for tuning in. I'll see you around. Bye. Hold up, wait! I'm sorry, I forgot a very important, crucial detail about the Eye of Eden. So, you can only do it once a week. And by that, I mean if you have rescued some of these statues, you cannot do it again until reset on Sunday. It's only a once per week thing. However, if you've missed a few, you can go back and collect those ones, but the ones that you have saved will not be available. This means that you can only get a maximum of 15.75 Ascended Candles from the Eye of Eden every single week. So if you've missed a few, go ahead, go back and find them. If you've got them all, do not go until Sunday. It resets every Sunday at 12 a.m. midnight Pacific time. So if you've completed Eden this week, be sure to take a little break. You deserve it. Um, come back next week with some buddies and do it all over again. All right. Time to go collect some winged light. If you want some help, my guide is below. Alright, bye again everyone. See ya.